Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back to our SPI board review. First of all, I want to thank everyone for the wonderful comments and feedback I received from my previous videos. I deeply appreciate you, and I will hurry and crank these videos as fast as I can. Let's jump right back into it. Question 51. The AIUM maximum intensity limit set for a sound beam is A, 100 watts per centimeter squared, B, 1 watt per centimeter squared, C, 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, or D, need to know if the sound beam is focused or unfocused first. The answer is C, 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. If you're asked on your test this same type of question and you're not given if it's a focused or unfocused beam, go ahead and just choose the lowest intensity that they give you, and that will be the correct answer. Question 52, which of the following will reduce blood viscosity? A, a hematocrit value of 45%, B, decreasing the length of a vessel, C, anemia, or D, increasing the diameter of a vessel? The answer is C, anemia. Question 53, which of the following does not affect the number of pulses in a single image? A, the number of scanning lines. B, the maximum scanning depth. C, line density. Or D, sector size. The answer is B, the maximum scanning depth. Question 54. The AIUM maximum intensity limit set for unfocused sound is A, 1 watt per centimeter squared, B, 1,000 milliwatts per centimeter squared, C, 0 0.1 watts per centimeter squared, or D, 100 watts per centimeter squared. The answer is C, 0 0.1 watts per centimeter squared. So on your exam, you might have to convert milliwatts to watts or watts to milliwatts to help you remember which one is the correct answer. Question 55, temporal resolution is affected by all of the following except A, imaging depth, B, the time necessary to create each image, C, the number and size of the pixels in the image, or D, pulse inversion. The answer is C, the number and size of the pixels in the image. This does not affect temporal resolution. Question 56, sound will travel slower in A, areas where the bulk modulus has a smaller value, B, a linear sound wave behavior, C, regions of refraction, or D, regions of compression. The answer is A, areas where the bulk modulus has a smaller value. Bulk modulus is the same thing as stiffness. So as stiffness goes up, the speed of sound goes up and vice versa. So they're directly related. Question 57. In order to use contrast enhancing agents, which of the following below is not required? A, must be a strong reflector of ultrasound. B, must be small enough to pass through arterioles. C, must be metabolically inert. Or D, must be safe, which is not required. The answer is B, must be small enough to pass through arterioles. To make this correct, contrast agents must pass through the capillaries. Question 58, a low mechanical index creates A, backscatter, B, strong harmonics, C, resonance, or D, nonlinear behavior?
The answer is A, backscatter. Question 59. Which of the following is directly related to patient exposure? A, contrast agents. B, output power. C, receiver gain. Or D, dynamic range. The answer is B, output power. Question 60. What part of the image is degraded when the image is too bright due to high output power? A, temporal resolution. B, pixels and spatial resolution. C, lateral and longitudinal resolution. Or D, range and axial resolution. The answer is C, lateral and longitudinal resolution. Question 61. Which of the following is not adjustable by the operator? A, compensation. B, demodulation. C, amplification. D, rejection. Or E, compression. The answer is B, demodulation. Question 62. Which of the following will improve the ability to measure the maximum velocity Doppler? A, increase the PRP. B, eliminate aliasing. C, use a transducer with one crystal. Or D, decrease the PRF. The answer is B, eliminate aliasing. Question 63, which of the following is true regarding pulse wave Doppler? A, pulse wave Doppler can measure very high velocities accurately. B, pulse wave Doppler utilizes two crystals, one to transmit and one to receive. C, pulse wave Doppler never encounters range ambiguity. Or D, pulse wave Doppler have echoes arising from the entire length of the overlap between the transmit and the receive beams. The answer is C, pulse wave Doppler never encounters range ambiguity. How many bits are required to display 14 different shades of gray? A, two, B, eight, C, four, or D, 10? The answer is four. First off, you're gonna calculate this by times in two by itself because each bit equals two shades of gray. So you're gonna times two by itself until you get a number that is close to 14. You go two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, and that is our answer. Question 65, which of the following diagrams represents the correct interlaced pattern for creating a frame on a television? The answer is D. So D represents the odd and the even fields that are interlaced together. Whereas this one, C, is just either an odd field or just an even field before it's interlaced. And these two are definitely not it. Question 66. So far, there is minimal evidence that cavitation really occurs in diagnostic ultrasound. Current data indicates that cavitation can occur in mammals at SPTP intensities exceeding A, 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, B, one watt per centimeter squared, C, 1000 watts per centimeter squared, or D, 
3,500 watts per centimeter square. The answer is D, 3,500 watts per centimeter squared. Question 67, which of the following sequence of numbers is correct to show a display screen? So each option has two rows with two different sequence of numbers. So A in the first sequence starts at 522, it counts down to two, then it counts up. So these are all even numbers. The second sequence of numbers starts at 527 and goes all the way down to nine, then it counts up. So this is including all the even and odd numbers. B starts with one and counts all the way up to 524. So this also includes all the even and odd numbers in this sequence. Then in this sequence, this will start at five and count all the way up to 523. This also includes all the even and odd numbers. So this is choice B. Choice C starts at 521 and counts down to one, then it counts up to four, also including all the even and odd numbers. Below that, it starts at 520, counts up to 526, then counts down to two, and then counts up to eight. These are all even numbers. Choice D starts at one and counts all the way up to 525. These are all odd numbers. Then below that, it starts at two and counts all the way up to 524. These are all even numbers. So this is choice A, choice B, choice C, and choice D. I've actually heard this question pop up a number of times in the past on the SPI boards, so I felt like I needed to throw this in so that you wouldn't be blindsided, just in case you see it. The answer is D. So it starts with one and counts all the way up to 525 in one sequence. This is all the odd numbers. Then on the bottom, it starts with two and then counts all the way up to 524. This is all the even numbers. So these are two different sequence of numbers. So you have the odd and the even numbers that interlace together to show a display screen. Question 68, what is the highest output intensity used in ultrasound? A, pulse Doppler, B, color Doppler, C, grayscale imaging, or D, 3D imaging. The answer is A, pulse Doppler. Question 69. The portion of the TGC curve that compensates for the effects of the increasing attenuation that results from increasing path length is called what? A, near gain, B, far gain, C, slope, or D, knee. The answer is C, slope. Now to help you guys with the anatomy of this TGC curve, this portion right here is called the near gain. Then it hinges. This is called the delay. This portion is the slope. And this is the knee followed by the far gain. So you have near gain, delay, slope, knee, far gain. Question 70, you have adjusted your TGCs perfectly as indicated by the red line in the image with a transducer frequency of five megahertz. You are given a new transducer with an unknown frequency with a new TGC setting representing the green dotted line. What is the most likely frequency used? 
A, 4.5 megahertz, B, 6 megahertz, C, 3 megahertz, or D, 2.5 megahertz? The answer is B, 6 megahertz. So in order to calculate this, it's really easy. You just compare your new line, look at the delay, and if the delay is shorter or shallower, that means you're imaging in a more shallow region. Now your options are only 4.5, 6, 3, and 2.5. In the question, you're given five megahertz. So the only megahertz that makes sense would be six megahertz because the higher the frequency, the more shallower the imaging. So six would be the best answer. Question 71. Which of the following does not belong with the group? A, rejection, B, suppression, C, threshold, or D, rectification? The answer is D, rectification. Question 72. The process of converting electrical signals within the receiver to a more suitable form for CRT is called what? A, amplification, B, compression, C, demodulation, or D, compensation. The answer is C, demodulation. Question 73, the AIUM maximum intensity limit set for focus sound is A, 1 watt per centimeter squared, B, 1000 watts per centimeter squared, C, 0 0.1 watts per centimeter squared, or D, 100 watts per centimeter squared. The answer is A, one watt per centimeter squared. Question 74, unfocused beams are A, more likely to cause temperature elevation in tissue, B, only related to temperature elevation in non-living objects, C, less likely to cause temperature elevation in tissue, or D, have never been correlated with temperature elevation in tissue. The answer is A, more likely to cause temperature elevation in tissue. This is because unfocused beams is going to travel through more tissue because it's not focused. Question 75. The difference between the far gain and the knee on the TGC curve is A, far gain indicates the maximum compensation that the receiver can provide and the knee represents the maximum reflections that can be compensated by the ultrasound system. B, Far gain indicates the maximum compensation that the switch can provide, and the knee represents the maximum reflections that can be compensated by the beamformer. C. Far gain indicates the maximum compensation that the ultrasound system can provide, and the knee represents the maximum reflections that can be compensated by the receiver. Or is it D. Far gain indicates the maximum compensation that the beamformer can provide, and the knee represents the maximum reflections that can be compensated by the switch. The answer is A, far gain indicates the maximum compensation that the receiver can provide and the knee represents the maximum reflections that can be compensated by the ultrasound system. Well, that concludes our next 25 questions. I will hurry and write 25 more and upload that video as quickly as I can. I'm Jim with ultrasoundborderview.com. Thank you so much for watching.